here. I'm Ms. Artastic and in this episode I'm going to be diving in on how to teach the elements of art to kids. So grab something to write with to take some notes and some scratch down some ideas that you're going to learn from this episode and let's make some art. <laughs> of art to teach with and then progress to some more of the challenging elements of art to teach just to build confidence. So we don't want to overwhelm students by starting straight out the gate with learning texture or space. Um, they're, more, they're more challenging compared to some of the others such as line or value which are a little simpler and easier to teach. In terms of easier, harder, sorry, easier to harder, we also want to scaffold the learning as well. That means that you want to start off with just teaching about it. Maybe you want to play a video um, about the elements of art. Maybe you want to um, play, make a slideshow, showing examples, and that's one of the first class, and just having a discussion. Maybe you're going to have a day where you're experimenting and playing with just creating lines or creating values or whatever it is, um, doing space and having overlapping versus size and all that jazz. Um, to then progressing and scaffolding the learning by then doing uh, a drawing in a sketchbook instead of experimenting and then progressing to finally creating an artwork uh, for it. But you're scaffolding the learning along the way. So you're not just starting straight out of the gate just with an art project. Okay, art project line, art project value, art project color, art project um, shape, art project form. Blah, blah, blah. Scaffold the learning. Start off with introduction, what it is, an experiment, try and using it, and then doing a sketchbook assignment. Then finally, you can make an artwork, and then think about how what better they will understand what the element of art is by the end of it. So I think that is really valuable when it comes to uh, teaching the your students about the elements of art. Remember, is to I think it's very important to consider going from easier to harder to scaffold the learning, to build that confidence, and then students are not going to be scared out of it, analysis paralysis, um, not understanding what you're talking about. You're going to have a higher success rate in your classroom and they're going to be more engaged because they're not going to feel lost. And I think that is the better way to go for that. Number two is to strategize when it comes to picking the order of what elements you're going to teach first, then, next, after, etc. So be very strategic. Again, like I said, don't pick the harder ones to do at the very beginning. Um, for me, the order I like to teach it now, you can tweak it. Everybody has their own little variation, although quite similar. I like to start off with line because it's straightforward, it's simple, and you need to know how to make a line in order to make art. So I start off with the element of art line. Everybody can feel successful for it. It's an easy one to scale in um, difficulty depending on if it's K or pre-K all the way up to grade 12. Um, then I like to teach value because you need to know value in order to do color, you need to know value in order to make uh, form on two-dimensional surfaces, you need to know value in order to make texture, and you need line for those as well. So I then teach value because it is another big building block of making an artwork. After that, um, I teach color. I'm going off my memory here. Then I teach color because it is so closely related to value. It's just in color form. So then I teach all about color because it's scaffolding it. Okay, we understand value. Well, just a little bit farther, not too different, is, is color. Now we're understanding color, we're learning about primaries, we're learning about mixing it into uh, secondaries, now we're learning about mixing our primaries and secondaries together to make tertiary colors, and then adding some white or gray or black to make our tints, tones, and hues and shades, so tints, I messed that up, tints, uh, our tints, tones, and shades, uh, like I said, I don't have a script, I'm just, I'm just going for it, <laughs> um, and then, uh, after that, um, we're going to, uh, teach, uh, shape, so then I like to teach shape, because that's familiar, um, and then because the next building block after that is form, and then I go and I teach form to my students because form is the next building block uh, after shape but now we're starting to develop space in there right we're trying to make the illusion of depth on a three-dimensional surface which then leads into space because it's the next natural progression after 
form, right? Because you already kind of started going there when you were making three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface. Um, so now you're teaching space, you're teaching about overlapping, you're teaching about atmospheric perspective, you're teaching about um, size and scale in relation to the horizon line, right? Things that are closer to the bottom or further away from the horizon line appear to be bigger, right? Smaller they are, closer to the horizon line, they appear to be smaller. Um, so um, these are all different things and then like linear perspective, you can do one point, two point, whatever. Anyways, um, all these are part of space. And then finally, I go, if I have time, into texture. And then I teach texture because that's a Gwen, it's kind of a nice way to ease out of it, we're done with the year. Um, it could be uh, harder or easier depending on um, how you teach it, but also the age of the students, right? If you're doing like a more high school, that's gonna be a kind of a hard one to teach because um, it's just complex. Um, anyways, I teach texture at the end because you need to know all the other things. You need to know how to make a shape, you need to know form, you need to know space, um, you need to know value, you need to know color, you need to know line in order to create texture, which is why it's at the end. All right, my question to you in this video is what resources are you looking for right now um, for teaching the elements of art? What, what is something that you're looking for that you kind of can't find? Let me know in the description of this video, in the comment section I mean of this video, let me know what resources you are looking for and I will do my best to personally reply to you and try to help you out. Number three is to introduce or hook first and then do um, more, um, warm ups or experiment, experimentations and then or play based activities first. So instead of starting off right at doing an art project, um, I like to introduce um, the topic, so the element of art, what it is, what it looks like, how we create it, and then I like to do a warm up activities or explorations or more play based experimentations and then I move in before I move into my art, art projects. Now some of these that I do uh, this with is my elements of art units in my T-Pictures Pay Teacher Store, my TPT store. Um, I have grade based elements of art units. They're fully planned, the whole unit. They each come with a um, uh, an introduction to all the elements of art for each grade, so it's leveled for the grade. Um, it comes with all your warm ups and your intro activities, your student choice artworks or more play based ones, um, your um, art projects, so five different art projects, uh, one for each, or no, more than that, I guess. Anyway, an art project for each of the elements of art. Um, and then uh, I incorporate those all together um, around the theme. So for instance, I think number grade one or grade two or K, I can't remember. Anyways, one of them is like farm for instance. And then grade three is like insects. And then grade four is like reptiles. And then grade five is space. And so each one is teaching the elements of art, but each year is through a different theme. So that way, even if you have kids year after year, um, it doesn't matter. They're going to scaffold the learning or build on what they learned in the previous years. But then also they're going to be creating through a different lens, right? Through a different theme. I think that's really important. So just introducing them, introducing the topic first and understanding it and playing with it first before they have the time to go show what they know through an art project is going to deepen the learning. It's going to reaffirm that they learn. They get more than one chance to learn the material and to practice it before being assessed on it. Um, and, and that way you're going to get a higher success rate versus expecting them to perform and move on, right? Then you're going to have kids that are behind. They're not going to, they're going to be a little bit confused when it comes to assessment time. Um, or if you have like, year-end assessments, what's it called, testing? We don't do that where I am. But anyways, if you live somewhere where they do testing, then in art, I don't know. Anyways, then that would be, um, a, you're gonna have a higher success rate if you spend the time teaching it to them through videos or slideshows or verbally and verbally, um, and then doing warm-ups and experimentations and then doing a little bit more student-led learning. And then the art project, they're gonna learn it and understand it so much better than if you just said, okay, now we're doing line, now we're doing belly, now we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. And you're just shoving our projects down their throat, all well, they're gonna remember is just doing our project after our project, not necessarily the concepts behind it, right? Now, if you're looking for those resources, make sure you find the links below to the elements of art resources. In the description of this video, I'll list to each grade-based one. I have K up to eight. Um, and each one is a different theme. 
And it's an in-depth unit for the elements of art, the whole unit. That means it comes with a video and a slideshow. Um, it comes with all your intro activities and your warm-ups. It comes with um, uh, information to teach what it is. And then it also comes with all the art project tutorials. And it comes with the final art project and all the assessment and all your rubrics and blah, blah, blah. All your reflections, all your art statements. Um, so that way you can teach it successfully and be planned in seconds. And let me tell you, it did not take me seconds to make. Anyways, you can find those in the list below. They are super in-depth and I think that they are the best way to teach the elements of art. I highly, highly recommend it for you um, if you're wanting to teach the elements of art to kids. So make sure you check those out in the description below the video. And then afterwards, your next step, number four, is to um, have them do self-directed. So after you do the introduction phase, then you're going to have them do more either a self-directed artwork or an art project tutorial. So now this is when you finish up with having them do an art project. So after you've done all the above, right, now the very end, then you get to teach an art project. So there should, this is all about the scaffolding of learning, again, to allow for success and higher success rate in your classroom. We don't want 10% of learners just being the people, just as kids that are artists in your classroom being successful. We want a high percentage of kids in your classroom feeling successful. We want more kids to say, yes, I have a win. Yes, I've shown growth this year. Yes, I am. I can be an artist. Yes, I can draw. Yes, I can make art. Yes, I'm happy in your classroom, whatever your name is, whatever teacher name you go by. Yes, I have fun making art. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I feel success. I feel like I've shown improvement. I feel like I understand art. I feel like I can say what the elements of art are. So now at the very end, again, you get to allow them to pick, you can either choose to maybe try experimenting with having some more self-directed artworks um, in your classroom, or you can try to have, um, try a, an, a full art project that shows and demonstrates the use of our, the element of our value, for example, um, or monochromatic self-portrait, whatever it is, um, an atmospheric landscape, atmospheric perspective landscape um, that also is showing value, right? Um, so I think that's the very end last step is then you get to do that art project and you might even as you go through the elements of art do like try experimenting doing one that's more self-directed and then one that's more of a full art project tutorial. It's really up to you. Um, even in my elements of art units I give the choices of student choice or self-directed art projects for them for each of the elements of art and my art project tutorials. Um, so that way you can experiment with going back and forth or doing both or maybe using the self-directed one as a fast finisher. It gives you lots of flexibility to let you teach or instruct the way that you would like or even try some different instructional methods and teaching methods. And I think that also is really fun because then you get to help your students grow in a whole new way. So check it out. Again, those are going to be linked to in the description of the video. For more elements of art to Tom lessons and resources, you can find them in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I'll link to that. The Miser Cats at Teachers Pay Teachers store. Link to that in the description of my video. Or if you're an art educator or an art teacher and you're looking for more of a curriculum that also includes the elements of art, I do have the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum that opens up every uh, September. Nope. Every August and every January, I almost said September because back to school in, where I am in Canada is in uh, September. Delete that. They don't need to know where I am. Um, it is opening, the Artastic Collective, try again. The Artastic Collective opens up every January and every August for enrollment. So if you're interested in a full curriculum to implement in your classroom, please make sure you check out the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum to help you with all of your planning needs in your classrooms. You can subscribe monthly or yearly, whatever is best suited for you. And then you can expect to receive a art curriculum that has artists and art history, elements of art and principles of design, themes, ceramics and sculpture, um, and so much more elements and principles, they say that, a directed drawing series, and a, an art teacher growth course all in Incorporated it and my commu exclusive community forum all incorporated inside um, and that again you can join either monthly or um, annually and then you will be receiving uh, a bundles of art resources when you first um, 
enroll, um, including my annual grab bundles and the previous ones that were released. And then every month you will get new resources added to your library and every year a new annual grab bundles, which are like collections of themes of resources, um, all working within a theme. So for example, Watercolor Wonders, I had, it was one year. Artists of Art History was another year and so much more. So make sure you check it out, our Tastic Collective, our curriculum in the description below and get on that wait list. And I will see you in the next episode, which is how to teach art to kids. You can click the link above or in the description of this video and I will see you there.